I really want to thank uh, Community Rowing, um, you know, CRI, as most people know it as, for hosting and sponsoring this event tonight. When I took it to Ted Benford, our executive director, he was like, absolutely, let's do it. So uh, I'm, I'm really excited. Um, I also want to thank uh, Eddie Moog, who is up there. He's going to be um, managing the, uh, the Q&A feature for us tonight, and he's our manager for all the Row Boston programs, so that huge middle school program that we do across Boston, uh, as well as the high school program that uh, Nancy and Cyan were both uh, participants of. And uh, he also uh, did the legwork to put this panel together. So uh, hats off to Eddie for getting these great people on the panel tonight. Um, my name is Ellen Minsner. I'm the moderator tonight. Uh, I am the Director of Inclusion and Advocacy at Community Rowing. Also had the pleasure of at least coaching at least Nancy, although I was a uh, program management by the time Cyan came on board. And uh, I've met Arshay a couple of times at the U.S. Rowing Convention, of all things, and started talking to him long before I even knew this, this movie thing was a thing and that it was going to be so great. Um, so I, I'm really excited. Uh, most of you know Arshe, but just to kind of um, tap off this panel, I would like each of the panelists in order uh, to uh, just uh, tell us your name, your connection to rowing, and what you're doing currently in your work or your life or anything like that. And we'll, we'll go Arshe, Nancy, and Cyan in that order. So Arshe, why don't you um, give us a brief introduction? Hey, yeah. So Arshe Cooper uh, from Chicago, uh, author of The Most Beautiful Thing, spent like the last six years, uh, you know, traveling and helping organizations diversify their programs, um, involved in a lot of activist stuff also in the, uh, in the world and in the city of Chicago, uh, especially. Uh, just excited to be a part of the sport, uh, excited to put, uh, 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 like I always say, brown faces on the water. When you do that, you begin to interact with people who don't look like you and you begin to learn from each other. And so I'm excited for um, what's gonna happen tonight. I wanna thank, again, thank you, Ellen and Eddie and Tad and, uh, for making this happen. So uh, I'm sure we're gonna talk a, lo a, a lot more about my life. So uh, that's it, thank you. All right, sounds good. Nancy. Sorry, I was on mute. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Nancy Duyon. I hail from Boston, Massachusetts by way of Haiti. And I was also a part of the Giro rowing team from, I think I was from age, 14, 15, something like that. Uh, so from 99, surprisingly. Um, yeah, I know, it's a long time. And uh, currently, I work in tech. I'm actually pretty renowned for helping uh, large tech companies that you have heard of uh, spread their technology around the world. So I help uh, technologies make sure that they're respecting cultures in other countries in the world. So the Googles, Cisco's, IBM's, Intel's, Uber's, and um, operating in multiple countries around the world. Uh, I'm Cyan. I rode with Row Boston, so they were boys on the team as well. Um, from my eighth grade year through uh, graduating in high school in 2016, and I go to Temple University, and I'm graduating in December, and I'm currently applying to vet school. And yeah, <laughs> awesome, good stuff, good stuff. Eddie, you want to introduce yourself briefly? Uh, sure, yeah, I don't want to take up too much time, but Eddie Moog, um, I've been at CRI for the past five years, um, and yeah, started with middle school uh, with Tiffany Macon um, as, my, as my manager, and we expanded our indoor middle school rowing program to, you know, 40 schools across the city. Uh, we have a, a yearly um, middle school indoor rowing championship that's mostly Boston kids. It's usually around like 1,500 kids. Um, which is, you know, just the, the pride and joy. Um, and now I get to oversee Row Boston High School and just uh, make sure we have a good relationship with all the high schools in the area um, and just all of our partners. So um, I'm really excited that everyone's here and thank you to all the attendees for uh, taking time tonight to come listen in. Yeah, yeah cool. I, I, again, thank you for the audience members. And the audience tonight um, is, is uh, Pretty varied, actually. We've got uh, current row Boston uh, kids from from that team, other local youth rowers. We've got parents. We've got coaches. We've got several board members from CRI. And as I was talking to the panelists earlier, I know there's a lot of people along the Charles River, uh, uh, collegiate coaches, club leadership, 
uh, that are all really interested in this current issue about you know how we are going to uh, diversify the sport but also actually make a really positive contribution to our communities um, and I would be remiss to say we actually uh, not just across the country uh, but across the globe I think we've got our, our friends from Balmain Australia para rowing are on tonight I think um, so we're really happy that this community is all here because I, I know that you know we're here because we care, we wanna make a difference and, and make some positive change. Um, so yes, the film, a most beautiful thing. Arche, amazing, Mary Mazio is not on tonight. Um, the film is compelling and we're so honored to be able to share it in this completely unique way since we're not having like a movie theater opening, typical premiere. Um, and able to do this in the unique way via Zoom. Um, so it's about the film, but I also do know that the majority of people are on this Zoom meeting because they've been reflecting in ways that they have never had before, at least not this deeply, not this urgently, and not this collectively ever before in my experience about why our sport remains predominantly white and despite uh, amazing people like yourselves picking up an oar, it, it, it's kind of persisted from Arche's generation to Nancy's and to Cyan's to a certain extent. Um, so we really appreciate you taking the time and share your experiences. Maybe they were similar to what you saw in the film. Maybe they differed, uh, but we really want to hear your perspective um, uh, on, on life in general beyond the movie. But we will start um, a bit with the movie. Um, and uh, we'll begin with Arche. And, you know, Arche, can you talk a little bit about what inspired you to write the memoir uh, about your experiences uh, with rowing and growing up on West Side of Chicago? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I wanted to um, shed a story of how I overcame my trauma, right? Because, you know, 15 years later, uh, speaking and talking to schools uh, and young people, especially on the west side of Chicago, they're still experiencing the same things that me and my brothers experienced on the team. And not much have changed. And, you know, you think about the things that are happening in the world, like whenever there's a mass shooting in a sub suburban neighborhood, right away they send in trauma counselors, right, to work with them, and, and they should. And I remember sitting there saying, wow, I, I, we experience this every day and we talk to nobody. There was no social workers in us, maybe one out of a thousand kids. Uh, I've, you know, I um, heard gunshots when I, sl I slept, right? I, I, I skipped over pools of, pools of blood. I, I lost people every other month, right? And somehow this sport came. This sport came um, to my school and this guy who, who, saw, who was a part of this sport who said, listen, Here's a sport that needs more diversity and more talent. And here is a community that needs more opportunity. How do we make it work? And he came to the school where his peers said, don't go. The school that he felt like needed the, the, the biggest opportunity. And I wanted to show young people how we navigated uh, through our community and through the things that, uh, through the hardship and through the neglect and through uh, the mistreatment of the community and the lack of leadership uh, with uh, those who serve and protect and those who are, are the aldermen and, and, and the government at that time. So I wanted to share that and I wanted to share the, po the power of access and opportunity and what, what can happen uh, when there's resources and, and how many of those stories can come out of the west side of Chicago if you drop a boat in a team in every public school in the city of Chicago, how many more Malcolm Alvin Prestons and Pookies will come out of this community? Yeah, that's, that's incredible. And, uh, you know, and how did, how did you connect with Mary? I know you actually came to our event, Grace, Grit and Glory. And Mary's like, Oh, I'm working on this cool project. I can't talk to you about it. And you were just kind of there. So how, how, did, you, how did Mary find you or you find Mary? Uh, tell us a little bit um, about that. Yeah, she, um, you know, she said someone told her to read the book. And um, she tweeted, Hey, Arshay Cooper, nice book. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, who, who is this person? I looked up, Olympic rower. Oh, that's awesome. Filmmaker, you know, and at that time, I reached out to so many people like, you got to tell the story. Ava, Will Smith, nobody tweeted me back, uh, but Mary did. And I gave her a call the next day. And, um, you know, I, I, you know, I said, hey, would you, would you come to Chicago? I want to show you um, uh, a little bit about uh, my city and I want you to meet some of the guys. 
and she came and we had a great conversation and she connected to some of the, uh, the great people that, uh, that have always done great work in Chicago, like Common, Dwayne Wade, um, and at Grant Hill. And from there, the, the film was made and it was, it was just an awesome experience. Cool. Yeah, I, I, I really loved it. Um, I wanted to kind of um, allow uh, Nancy and Cyan, like, you know, based on your experiences with the Row Boston or the G Row program, as it was more known back in the day, um, do you see any similarities to Arshay's story about what your experiences were or, you know, any differences really? Like, I mean, when I see that movie, you know, everyone can relate to catching a crab in their first race. I did it. You know, like there's so many things that are relatable, but, but really, um, you know, I don't know. Do you guys have any comments about that based on your experiences with the, the program one way or the other? Uh, yeah, so I know for me, like, I, I really identified with um, kind of using the sport as, like, an outlet for, like, trauma. Like, I know a lot of the people on the team were dealing with a lot of things at home, and I was definitely not the same things, but I had a lot going on with my family at home and being able to, like, focus on school and then having some place to go after school and not just be at home was really, really meant a lot to me. And uh, also just, like, the feeling of, um, they mentioned, like, going to a regatta and then like you being the only team that doesn't isn't just like completely all white very very tall people um and just like kind of that feeling of like not really belonging but like having something to prove like that was all those are all things that I could really identify with um and yeah it was a very powerful film and I felt like uh, I really felt connected to it cool I, I know for me I related to the film heavily <laughs> a lot um, <laughs> From the moment I got on the team, because a sign that said free food, which is really what I was trying to get, <laughs> and got caught, <laughs> to not really experiencing white people, but trying to understand why white people weren't afraid of me. I'm like, what are you doing in the hood? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> and being upset that folks were, or not were just confused by the fact that they, they appeared not to be afraid, but also experiencing racism on teams, seeing white people for the first time that were all tall, looked the same. Um, I remember I wrote a few notes about things that really like got me in the movie, like the fact that the water gave me such peace that my brain, co-signing to Cyan, I, I mean, my brain was hyperactive on survival mode. I was in eight foster homes and I remember, Ellen may remember the day she found out I was in foster care because it was a really emotional thing that I was keeping secret for a while. But you know, like coaches are, they don't care what your excuses are. You get on that water, <laughs> you know? And I, I think it was helpful for me. I know, Aaron, <laughs> I know, you know, having experiences with my coaches, both clashes and wins. I remember even when I became a captain of the team, just looking back when I thought one great thing was um, to motivate the team was to back up the troublemakers against the water. Not good tactics, <laughs> you know? Uh, you know, I remember catching crabs. I loved it when I heard power 10. I remember the coxman who would cuss. Oh man, do I remember that. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, changing out of urban clothing, you know, that was a really interesting experience for me because I really didn't have much and I definitely wasn't trying to wear spandex and I didn't even know what, they, what, they, what it was back then. Um, I saw scenes about, you know, just kind of not having meals sometimes. I remember Thanksgiving times where I would literally look in people's windows wishing I had a family to eat with and using crew as an escape from some of these emotions um, so that I wouldn't have to deal with what was going on. And so the fact that we had to get up at four in the morning for some races, which made no sense to me, you know, was such a way to get my mind off of things that were going on in my life. Um, I remember experiencing traveling. Man, when I saw all these black boys traveling around the place, and I remember my experience, I mean, no one would ever take me to Vermont or to all these other places. And so I, I definitely feel like crew was a part of breaking a generational curse for me. My parents were farmers from Haiti. And, you know, to, I mean, the other thing is that crew got me to college. You know, they weren't just teaching us how to row. They, they actually helped us with our education. Um, and so just a lot of memories, um, a lot of just interesting experiences. I was very emotional watching the film. So I'm very thankful for it. I wanted to piggyback off of Nancy about the education thing because I I remember before I started the team, I was doing so badly in school, just like awful. And it was just because like everything that was going on at home, it was like, why, why do I care about school? And so really just having that outlet like meant a lot to me. And I, 
I also picked my school, Temple University, because we went to Philly and like we got a tour from the head of the women's rowing coach at the time. And like, I was just, just like so blown away that there was an actual school in a city that had an actual campus and wasn't like BU, just sprawling buildings everywhere. And so like, yeah, like even through my college career, like I am where I am right now because I was on that team, the experience that I had there. And it was the Philly trip, especially like, um, I remember meeting the kids who were in, doing the Philly Road program. I forget what it was called, but it was so cool to see that there was another program like ours and we weren't the only ones uh, trying to like make Roan accessible to inner city kids. Um, so that was really powerful for me. <laughs> cool. Uh, that, I uh, I'm really appreciate hearing all that stuff. Um, I want to touch on something that Nancy kind of said, though. Um, you know, in, in um, you know, the coaches working with uh, programs, like we don't always get it right. You know, I know a lot of instances that Nancy's talking about. She and I clashed. It's it's okay, but there is something to that thing, though. You know, you're right, Nancy. We maybe we were we could have been. Um, different in our approach uh, sometimes because knowing all my world of experience now and all your world of experience like you know um, I know sometimes like I yelled as a coach and when I yell I don't take into account what people are bringing to the table uh, when they come to practice you know because I felt like at that time the best thing to do would be like well you put your blade in like this and you come on time and you do all these things and are there ways that um, you know, uh, I, I think I would have done things differently um, back then because we never want to make excuses, right? We want to do the hard work because the hard work is compelling. However, um, er asking everyone to fit in the box mm. without being fully aware of some of the trauma that is going on in someone's mind when they come to a session, um, do you have any thoughts about that? Because uh, when I look back on those instances, I think of a few things I, I could have and would have done differently if I had all the knowledge back then that I have now. Um, but what, what, is, what, what do you think about that? I mean, is there, are, are, is there anything to that that might be a deterrent for somebody who may not be as strong a, a, a personality as you are, Nancy, to have stuck with it? Um, you know, I think the the part of the issue I was having in the beginning and maybe you guys can relate in the background was that I I felt like um a bunch of white people came to black schools to try to save black kids so it could make them look good right I felt like it was a, their hero story that they wanted to show off because you know I've won gold this or I've done this and now I have this team and I'm gonna make them win and I, I think I don't remember um really having an opportunity, except when the girls were kind of locked in rooms together and in hotels together talking about where we came from. And, but I think it was so good to hear some of these differences. I had no clue that there were like white people near my neighborhood. I had no idea, <laughs> you know? And here's this team from Boston Latin Academy who were participating. And sometimes there were racist moments, but we had an opportunity to talk about it and confront it. I, I really, don't regret some of those experiences because I think as a result, for example, of your nature, it made me way more comfortable around white people. I was terrified of white people before that, you know? And so here you are coming at me, but not from a place of race. You're not even judging me. You are literally, we are a team and we will win. I remember the time that we, we won second place for the first time. We never thought we could run. When you first joined a team, I remember we were just kind of playing around the water and you made us row miles and we didn't even know we could go that far. Um, and so we're like, okay, some of us were plotting to drop the team, figure it out. I'm like, she is serious. She's really about to try to get us to win. And we won second place. And I remember, and you probably might not say that today, but you said, do you, is that, is that winning? Does that make you feel great? And I remember thinking to ourselves, after that moment, I think our strength went up. <laughs> I know, I know. Our strength, I mean, come on. The sport is pretty aggressive, you know. Our, our, I think I remember after that, we were so about winning. It was like in our blood. It was, there was nothing more important than trying our best. And I think that we didn't know that we had any more in us. I think that we were okay with just being okay and having these coaches come in who were like, no, I know how strong you are. I see, I mean, I believe in this really, really helped me not only just navigate my own life, because I am one vocal figure today. As you can see, I'm pretty comfortable, right? Um, but it also just kind of helped me 
get through hard times, if that makes any sense. Crew was the only sport I didn't leave. I tried every sport and crew was the one thing that I kept showing up to. I mean, the fact that I could wake up four in the morning, show up every weekend, travel with them, it was my saving grace. It really was my saving grace. So I guess I would say that, you know, it's always, always important if you can try to, to mm, I wanna say find common ground so that you can break the ice because I think it can be really hard to find common ground. And in those first few years, I just couldn't understand where we were common, right? Until I had to change that narrative when I realized that there was some commonality. There was some commonality in winning. There was some commonality in that when you thought you could do what you had, like the best you could, it was 40% more in you, you know? And so I, I really, I appreciate it. Like I, I look back, because I remember when I graduated, I was like, oh my God, I will never go back to that lifestyle. I miss it so much. I really intensely miss the discipline, the routine, the organization, the fact that I was able to experience different things. I didn't know what a woman's college was before crew. And then when I experienced it, I was like, I gotta go to a woman's college. You know, I was so excited about it. And so now here I am as an engineer working with mostly white men, right? And so I don't think I would have been this far had I not had some of those tougher experiences. So I'm, I'm just really appreciative and hope that for all of you, uh, you can do a little bit more to dig in into the story, but from a curious, open-minded way and not necessarily uh, um, a limited way. Uh, for me, it worked out. The way, I like the way it kind of worked out, but I, I definitely think people have a story. And I almost worry. I almost worry if they would have been soft on me if they knew my full story at first. And I don't want that. I certainly didn't want that. Uh, yeah, I want to say, like, um, I remember when I first joined varsity, uh, Kate was my coach, and Kate was tough, like, so, so tough. I was so appreciative of that because I was stepping into the space, and it was just, uh, it was very different from being a novice and then being onto that varsity team. It was just a whole, totally different level, and I was really down on myself, actually, and I remember about Kate, and then even continuing later when I had Coach Ariel, like, they really kind of saw the athlete that I could be that I didn't know I could be. And so I was very grateful that even though like they didn't know my story, I was really grateful that that kind of wall that I put up was allowed them to push me as hard as I could. And, um, and later I did, I did end up like um, really explaining to Ariel, like my past and everything. And it didn't, I definitely felt really close to her in that moment. But like you were saying, like Nancy was saying, like, I, I definitely wouldn't have, I don't think I would have been receptive if like, I showed up at a team and then people were like, so what's your story? What's going on with you? Cause like that's, I don't want people to view me differently because of things that are going on. Like, I just want to be here. I want to row. I want to focus on being good and being great. And I don't want to have to deal. I don't want to bring my home life to the team. Cause I'm here for something totally different. Um, and so that was just really great. And I also, I wanted to go back to what you were saying about kind of like the white people saving you thing. Um, even though I, I grew up with a different background because I did go to all white Catholic schools in Boston and like I went to Boston Academy so I was used to being around white people like that wasn't really an issue for me but I remember even in the spaces that were really empowering like the grace great and glory uh, spaces they used to um, space us out and have us sit like a couple of our Boston members to each table and I remember feeling like wow this is amazing that I'm sitting here next to these Olympic rowers and they're telling their great stories but I remember also just being so aware of like that we occupy such different spaces in this world because like they're casually talking about like oh just go to Harvard and it's just like I knew that wasn't a reality for me and so um like those uh, and so in those moments where I, I was very aware of like we're the inner city team like we're here uh kind of to make people look good but it was still just like wow these women were amazing so it was uh just very conflicting feelings I guess but um in terms of just like coaching, I was, I was happy that I was able to open up on my own terms. And uh, when I was ready to kind of just bring my two worlds together, I was, I guess I was just really grateful for that. And I definitely wouldn't change that experience. And I am so, so grateful to Kate and Aaron for pushing me the way they did because um, like I said, they just saw someone that I didn't see and um, I'll never be able to thank them enough for that. And so, yeah. Um. I kind of have a question for all of you guys. There's a, there's a point in the movie 
And um, maybe this relates more to Cyan, but Arshay can speak to it. Um, I think I've asked you this question before. Somewhere in the movie, it was like maybe a, a teacher or somebody said, um, you can't be what you can't see, or you can't be it if you can't see it. And, you know, I feel like, you know, maybe there's other Zoom meetings going on around the country right now with like other amazing Nancy's, Cyan's and, and Arshay's. We're not seeing them enough. And um, how important is, that visual representation. I mean, Cyan, God bless you. You are emblazoned on the truck that drives rowing machines all through the city of Boston right now. Nancy, if you could see this, it's like a trailer truck wrapped in Cyan's image and she's like hauling on an oar and there's beautiful water. It's really phenomenal. Um, is that type of imaging important at all or is it too, too much just um, positioning, maybe more of what you mentioned at Grace, Grit and Glory, like sometimes you feel like we're just, we're just there because of, you know, we're the, um, from the Royal Boston program or whatever. Is that kind of imaging important and could we use more of that? Uh, no, I know I'm sitting here like embarrassed because <laughs> that, that was a lot. I was not expecting that when I was asked, hey, we want to use your picture for something. I was expecting a banner inside the boat house that would be up there for a couple months, maybe not this truck. Um, but, um, I, I was like very proud of that because especially it says Rowan for all. And, um, I was, I'm very proud that I'm able to, if some kid sees that and it's like, oh, this black girl is able to row on this team like that, that means everything to me, especially with, with it saying Rowan for all. But I remember, but I remember at the time, like, cause the truck only says community rowing is CRI. And I remember being like, oh, I kind of wish that it said row Boston too. Um, but yeah, that kind of imaging is definitely very important because I feel like even if we are, like for me, I just didn't know what rowing was. I had never been exposed to it. I think even if I just saw images, which were just all white people, like that's definitely not enough. Like it has to be um, people of color, black people that are doing this sport. And so I think like that trail of me is definitely very important and um, things like that are, I feel would be very helpful. Um, but it's just, but then when you bring up the places like Grace and Glory, I don't know how to navigate that. It's just, um, yeah, that that's a little bit harder because it's just like you're meeting people who are just in different worlds. And so sometimes having those worlds meet, you're just always going to be able to notice that, I guess. But yeah, I don't know if anyone else wants to. <laughs> well, uh, Arshay, you had that experience. Like you, you first went to the meeting, right? And you're like, oh, I'd look at a video and it's all these old white people yeah. wrong and you, you wanted to walk out of the room. Yeah, I, yeah, you remember, yeah, when the sport, when it was in the launch room and, and they said, check out this sport and I looked at the TV monitor and no one looked like me and I said no. And I was actually upset about it. And then, you know, the next day I showed up, they was giving out free pizza. So Preston was like, I think we should just go for the pizza. And I was like, I, I go for the pizza, right? Uh, you know, you look at it today in different organizations, like tennis organizations that's in the inner city or or uh, golf, you know, organizations that focus on golf, they always say those young black kids, Tiger Wood is my inspiration or Venus or Serena or Coco is my inspiration, right? So representation, uh, it, it do matter, you know? And remember, if you read my book, I talk about Coach Victor, who was the black coach and how we all kind of gravitated towards him, you know, because he's like, oh, he must know our experience, right? And know what it's like. So tell me what it's like, right? And so I think representation uh, uh, totally matters. And, um, you know, it, it shows you that it's in reach, that, that it's close to you when someone looks like you have been a part of the sport, right? Man, if, they, if Anita could do it, I can do it, right? If Akil can do it, I can do it. And, and I can be that person. And we, we see it everywhere in the world today. And, but I do think what was important is that and all these clubs and all these people who want to diversify the sport, sometimes they don't have that person of color or they don't even have the resources to hire a person of color, right? But, you know, I think the way Ken approached the sport got my attention. Or, you know, I was in Harlem with this, this, this coxswain named Ian, small white kid, and we in Harlem, and there's like 700 black kids looking at him like this. And he said, you know what, I wasn't tall enough to dunk a basketball. I knew that I couldn't handle football. Like if I got tackled, they would break me. I had no confidence. I wasn't strong enough to throw a baseball, 
Like I felt like sports wasn't for me. I had no confidence because I was so small. But this sport came to me and they told me about this, uh, this position called being a coxswain. And I learned how to lead big and strong people to go medals. I learned to become a leader. And these are all the great things this sport did to me. And all the kids was like, wow. Why? Because he spoke to the human. That people go through those times and not having confidence. They've been rejected from teams. And the way Ken approached us was like, listen, that you were maybe raced once in your city and then you would travel. That you will overcome the fear of water and you will learn how to swim. That you will build a brotherhood. That we build a sisterhood. Those are all the things that were missing in my life. So when you connect to the human, right? I think uh, people want to be a part. And I think that was special. So I think when you as a coach understand these communities and youth development and, and what's happening in the neighborhood and what the neighborhood needs, and then you can find maybe a black and strength and conditioning coach from the neighborhood and to connect and build a team that way, that would be a powerful force. So I do think that representation matter, but if you don't have it for now, I would say, please just connect to the human and then hire uh, those young people that you touch to come back and be the leaders and the coaches in that community. Um, I'm going to co-sign a little bit on that. I, I think food was definitely the thing that maybe attracted me to the program, but that wasn't going to keep me. But I also definitely saw a Black woman, Carrie Bullock, was the first Black woman crew person I ever saw. So to me, I thought it was something anyone could do because I saw a Black woman. The same reason I got into engineering is because I saw women in it. And you know, the, back then, it was like secretarial work. So half women in the 70s and 80s were com in computer science, right? And, you know, there were Black representatives there, but eventually those folks disappeared. Um, and what kept me there was, I think, the vulnerability from individuals, my coaches, and finding that common ground. I distinctively remember, mind you, we were very young. We were eating Teddy Grahams. We, were, we always thought we were the broke team that always had the broke snacks because we would see all these other folks grilling eggs and doing things and we're like, we got our Teddy Grahams and some lettuce. Um, and one day, you know, we noticed on the vans, we would actually separate by race. The black folks would sit together and the white folks would sit together. And um, one of the Teddy Grahams appeared to be half white and half black. <laughs> you know, half of it was like lighter and half of it was black. And we made up this story about biracial Teddy. Folks from my day will remember this. And it literally brought us common ground. They're like, it's like us. We've come together, you know? And so literally, I think that what kept us there was this idea that there was something in common amongst us, that if we were going to be broke, we we're going to be broke together. And, we're, and, and the vulnerable moments I had with my coaches, when I remember, it, they, they didn't know for years I was in foster care. I was so embarrassed by it because my parents had given me away and it was just a lot for me to deal with. But when they found out about it, um, I think they were already loving before, but I think the love went all the way up. And so I, I think that while I still appreciate the toughness on me, because I believe me, I was a tough girl. You had to get tough on me. You know, I, I really appreciated the fact that folks were able to connect with me from a vulnerable place so that we could see within each other that we were common more than not, not alike. Uh, yeah, like I want to say that like with everyone, I never ever felt uncomfortable with my teammates like with everyone on the team especially because the girls team was mostly boss line academy kids like i went to school with them anyway and so being able to uh we were all really really close and with the boys the bls boys um it was always even though we knew we looked different than everyone together at least we we're doing it together and later we did have grills and you know actual food <laughs> got us when i was there we all had money after my pool we were early <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was sitting here, I was like, oh, wait, we had cheeseburgers and everything in our regards. But yeah, um, it was always a, we might be the charity team, but at least we're doing it together and we have our connection together and we're family. And um, yeah, so it was just like we were facing the adversity together and I, I really valued that. I, I think uh, one thing I want to talk about, and Arshay, you mentioned it as well, like, uh, I don't know the regatta experience in the movie. Um, but, uh, you know, when the program, uh, of Real Boss that I'm most familiar with, um, you know, we weren't really sure, do we want to be competitive? How are we going to do this? And I, I feel like racing is compelling, but what I'm hearing 
and I don't know, it sounds like you traveled a bit, Arshe. What I'm hearing is they're racing on the water, like, yeah, that's, that's cool and that's hard and everything, but, um, you know, the experiences that you have, just being able to travel as a unit to a new place, trying to figure out how to interact, um, you know, and I, I've always heard, you know, I've coached different high school programs um, a lot, and most of my, oh, rowing in college is so different. Um, I think a lot of college programs also looking to try and uh, uh, diversify, and and uh, I know that, uh, I don't know, it's something about that regatta experience, is, is that something, tell us about that part of the movie, Arche, or at least your experience of it, and I find that racing is, is compelling. I've always tried to put that in on whatever level. And, um, you know, is that a compelling part about being part of, of the team, is having that, that regatta, uh, that Arche? Can you speak a bit about that? Yeah, I think that's what caught my attention, right? That the fact that basketball, the basketball teams in my neighborhood, the football teams, they all practice in their community. They all play balls basketball games in the community for us that like we every time we race that we're traveling we're somewhere else we get to experience something different and new that that was awesome it, it was awkward it was different that we were the only blacks around but we connected because of that we were like okay we're the only ones here right uh, we have to stick with each other we have to learn from each other so we kind of followed each other around and learn to trust and lean on each other because of that and so that created a real um, good experience, but I do think that um, racing, right, and winning is awesome. It's great. Like we we wanted to do that, um, and 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 it's an important metrics to to, to measure, right? Um, but you know, in our sport, we can win medals all day long, and still our sport can be threatened, and we can still not be in the Olympics. And that's not everything, but the win that really mattered for us is the fact that guys who hated each other at first, when the world and when our school was trying to figure out how to make us connect, that somehow this sport helped us connect. The fact that our culture, in our culture, we was afraid of the water, right? And we overcame that fear. When other folks was trying to figure out how to do it, the sport made it work, right? We, we, we I mean, we travel the hour and a half on public transportation every day when uh, you couldn't get other kids to do that the sport made it work and so when we can measure success and let us know that that is huge that even if you may have lost the waste the race that you have you guys have accomplished something that the world quite haven't figured out yet and that's the story that a movie director that sports illustrated that today show and all these folks want to hear because how can you turn your back on a sport of young men who went through so much hardship, went through so much heartbreak, who have to worry when they get to the water that they may drown or when they get home, they may get shot, but still show up every day and pull for each other and meditate with each other, right? I think that's the world. I mean, that's the thing that the world wants to hear. That's what's going to keep our sport relevant. And then when, when and, and that's what's going to draw the attention of more uh, folks to, to our sport. So I think, um, that, that that's the important piece and and uh and, and that's the thing that changed lives and so the medals are great winning and regattas were awesome and and, and, and exposed us to a lot of different things but the wins the, the 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 everyday life with each other at the bow house and those lessons really helped us get to where we at today cool well and and then again it kind of keeps begging the question right like powerful stuff cool opportunity a sport that wants to diversify kind of what's next like so let's say we put nancy cyan and arshay we we put you all across boston in our schools and we we ask you to get kids fired up about rowing what is it that you'll say what is it that you think would be compelling to a young person to get involved because we're we're reaching them on a great level and he's got a lot of kids doing their indoor rowing coming for field trips but for people to stay long-term in the sport or at least stay connected in some way, whether it be through giving back to the sport like Arche is, you folks coming onto the panel, what would you say to uh, compel young people uh, in Boston or somewhere else uh, to take up the sport? And I'll, I'll take answers from all of you, but you know, Arche or whoever. I'll start. Um, I think that I, I wish they told me how much traveling happens. The fact that you can escape 
your world to an extent. And that's what it was. It was like, I can run away, but you know, come back, <laughs> you know? I think that I would share the fact that if you're going through something, here's a way that you can go explore new places, explore different, find peace. It's a different kind of meditation, you know? But still get a little bit of that, if you like sports, you know, that aggressive nature that you still have to make weight and all these other interesting things. And so I think the fact that it opens doors up for folks that may not have the opportunity to have those doors, um, that's one way to really get people moving. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't have to just be a meal here or there, but a, a chance to have an experience of a lifetime in multiple different experiences that none of these experiences are like, Every regatta I went to was a different experience. Every individual, every race, every ergathon, everything was a different experience. And so it's not like you're coming in and you're just joining a swim team to swim. It's you're joining this team. You're going to learn to swim somehow. You remember my struggles with swimming, Lord, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, and every day is going to be a different experience. So I, I really like that now, like when I work out or things like that, I prefer not having the same thing done all the time. And so, um, those are just some things I think that would excite folks who are a little bit different to join. Yeah, I say I uh, I want to say I really need to see for me because I I grew up playing like really contact sports like basketball and soccer and things like that. Like rowing looks like it's not at all uh, kind of like a your typical contact sport. Like oh, you're in a boat, you're race. Like that's boring. But if you can like stress like no, like you're in this boat with eight, eight other, uh, seven other people, three other people, whatever, and you, you really cannot continue this race without them. Like, you really all have to depend on each other, and that was a feeling for me that I, I don't even know where you'd get that somewhere else, and just being on the water with those people, like, I was always the closest with whoever I was in, in top boat with, and um, just kind of that bond you make by, by, with that connection, uh, that's something that's so impressive, and again, the traveling, like, that Philly trip, the New York trip, that was, <laughs> I missed the Florida trip. I'm still kind of sad about that, but all the trips, those are really great too. And just stressing that like you are going to be able to see uh, so many new places. You're going to meet so many different people. Um, you're going to be able to hold an Olympic medal. Like where else are you going to be able to do that? <laughs> um, and so it was just like, for me, it was always the connection that I was able to make with the teammates that that's, that's what kept me there every year. Yeah, I think, um, you know, for me, you know, I, I, do these, I do these things all the time. And, you know, I, I, as you, you know, when you watch the film, we all are very honest and I'm honest, right? You know, as, as a kid, I, you know, I, I didn't like a lot of people. I was a loner. I didn't have any friends, right? I didn't think I could get along with people who didn't look like me because I didn't get along with people who looked like me. Um, you know, I, 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 I didn't make the basketball team. I didn't make the football team, but you know, this sport came into my life and it changed my perspective. It taught me how to swim, taught me to overcome the fear of water. I met um, my best friends there. It, it completely changed my life. I've been to places that I never dreamed of and it was this sport, right? And, 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 and it's exciting to talk about. And I ask young people to, to just come and experience it, you know, and, and, um, you know, that's, that's, what I, that's what I say to them, to, to check it out, to travel, you know, to learn, to change their bodies, to, um, you know, a, a interact with folks. And I think once we get them there, and I think we can get them there, and it's proven that we get young people there, but we have to understand that the hope that the boathouse culture is welcoming, that people are excited to see them, even if they're not a part of your program, maybe they're masters, or maybe there's another program there, maybe you share the boathouse with private school teams, just the importance of of saying to someone you never saw before that I see you tomorrow is just goes a long way. And, and, and just being excited to see someone. I always teach young people at different boathouses, no matter who you are, when someone walks into your boathouse, it's your boathouse. And that boathouse must be the lighthouse of the community. And when they come there, they're there for something. They showed up for something. And, 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 and let's be a part of, of, of getting to know them and understanding why they show up. If, if their stroke is, not as perfect as yours, don't laugh about it. You help them, right? You show them. When you can show up and you see a, another young person there who, who looks good and they get off their machine and help you do something, it's, it's awesome. So I think that the same amount of energy and love and work that we put into uh, a young person to come to the boathouse, we got to put that same energy, love, into making sure that we keep them. But that's 
also working with our young people and telling them the importance of making that Bowhouse culture uh, trustworthy and warm and welcoming. And that's how we, we, we keep the young people. And I, I think it's, 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 uh, that's, that's very important uh, to me. And, and we see it all the time, right? Kids coming to Bowhouse houses, different cities, and, and, and they leave. And I think that, you know, vision is everything. Like I wanted to see myself. If I'm gonna spend so much time in the sport, I wanna see a, my pipeline to maybe the Olympics, right? And I think that, you know, the biggest lesson I learned in the sport is that you can't do, I can't do the work of eight people, but I need eight people to do the work, right? And then we'll get there much faster. So it can't be just Ellen, Ro New York, Arche, and, and, and Ted that cares about diversity in the sport. It needs to be U.S. Rowing, uh, National Rowing Foundation, Ellen, and every boat club and every college coach to care about the sport, right? Just us, we can't diversify the sport. We need the sport to diversify the sport. And then things will be awesome. So if I can go there and row on a youth level and now sit at GGG and see Black people who look like me row on the college level, okay, I can do it. You know, it doesn't show me that only white people can do this, but people who look like me can do this too. They just don't stop at the youth level. That shows me that the college level is warm and welcoming and I can be there and get through that too and go to the national team level and beyond. So I think it's important to show, to give everything we got in those recruitment sessions, but also give everything we got every day and making sure that day one is this, um, uh, well, day 146 is the same as day one when they walk into the boathouse. Warm, welcoming, and exciting to have them. Can I add one little point after that? Ashe, one of the best things I heard in that movie was taking a bad choice and choosing to make a new choice. And I think that what's beautiful about the movie, what's beautiful about all our backgrounds is you might think that we've come from kind of like terrible, bad places, or we might feel terrible, we might feel bad, we might be codependent, we might be struggling. And to be able to connect with somebody and say to you that no matter what world you're from, you can make this new choice to try something different, I think is extremely inspiring. You know, I'm out here in Oakland. I live right by the water, by all the boathouses and stuff. And so I want to make sure that I can tell a lot of people that, that, you know, no matter what you're going through, as much as you think that this might not be for you, this is an opportunity for you to make a new choice and, and be somebody different if that's what you want to be. And it can be through something like this, this sport. Cool. I, I want to just make a point. I, this has come up before and it came up in the, in the chat from one of our uh, past uh, Row Boston team members. You know, should we be concerned about tokenism when we go out and recruit? And the question is, um, is there a way we can advocate diversity without showing tokenism? I think probably the answer has something to do with the sincerity that Arshe was talking about, about help and love. I mean, I just love those two words, like help and love. It's hard to look like you're advocating tokenism if you're really showing uh, help and love. But can we talk a little bit about that? Because there are few shining examples um, and uh, we don't want to be, uh, well, I don't want to just over talk this question. I think you know what I'm talking about. Do you guys have any, any thoughts about that? Well, I don't know if you can be a token if there's more than one. So I think like when I meet Carrie, um, she probably was a token and she probably chose to be the different one. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, at least for my world, especially when I try to get folks to recruit, don't think you got one. Yes, we did that diversity thing. You know, right. I think it is about over indexing on the underrepresented individuals so that they can have an opportunity. I know Giro Boston, that's what they were about. They wanted to over index. While we did have white members on the team, their goal was to make sure that we were well represented, that we felt supported, that we had others around us that looked like us. Because I, I don't know if I would have stayed if I was the only black person on the team, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but it definitely helped to have a lot of variety, uh, have a lot of diversity. And so, um, yeah, if you are approaching this as tokenism or if you think that you've got one, so you did it, I would say keep trying, keep working at it. Try to try to have a a team that represents this this United States. Try to have a team that provides an opportunity for you to learn different things about different people if you can. And try to use some of the the uh, different methods we suggested today to try to recruit. I I personally am now a huge fan of white people going to all black schools 
And because believe me, they'll look at you funny, but if you ask them to say, we're, we're here to hear it. And so I appreciate the fact that somebody brought a, a boat into the ghetto, <laughs> you know, or the fact that somebody decided I went to John D. O'Brien, which is a mostly black school. I mean, I don't even know how they selected us. I don't know who would have thought to go there, <laughs> you know, to get this team on, but those are ways to, to help. You can go to schools that don't have opportunities and yeah, you're going to have to deal with the discomfort that we deal with every single day. This is something I like to tell my white folks all the time. They're like, but I'm uncomfortable. What do you think I feel every single day? You can take a moment of discomfort to go someplace that you don't understand and try. And yeah, some weird things might happen, but I promise you it'll be worth it. It's always gonna be a learning opportunity. So uh, despite the fact that maybe you feel some tension about entering into places or you don't feel like you have all the answers, I really do not want that to stop anybody from going forward. I think when Ellen talks about mistakes per se, I don't think they're mistakes. I think that she emerged herself into an opportunity to learn and grow and she has, you know? And so I hope the rest of you kind of think about that when you do try to, um, you know, pull folks who may have traumatic backgrounds to join the team. And hopefully you guys will stick with it when they push back because there will be some pushback, but love, man, is, is the only thing that can save you through some of that. And so if you can stick to it, show people that you support them, show them that you're there for them. I remember Ellen would show up in our classes. We, our grades, my God, <laughs> you know, and show up in the cafeteria and make sure that we were eating well, you know, different things just to make sure that we knew that we were supported, that we were loved, that our health mattered, that we mattered beyond just doing her day job, you know, and just doing the coaching, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I want to say that I, I never, I don't know, not that I never felt like the token thing, but in terms of like my interactions with my coaches, like I never, I never felt like, oh, um, they like me because I'm black and it looks good for the team. Like I never felt that because I knew that my coaches really cared about me. And, I, and again, like I wasn't the only one. And I feel like as long as you are actively, consistently trying to recruit more people to diversify the team, it's like a conscious effort. And it's not like you stop once you get one, like Nancy said, like then uh, you can't have tokenism. And I know that also with Ro Boston, like from my time there, um, that's when they really started to like, like we changed our unis from just being the robust unis to the CRI robust unis. And I remember how awkward we felt when that happened as a team because um, yeah, like maybe we were technically CRI, but we didn't feel like CRI. And we always felt like we were definitely very separate from CRI. So when it was like CRI trying to really like swallow us up with them, it was, it felt that kind of felt like tokenism because um, we never have any interaction with CRI really. And so um, I remember when that happened, that was like, talking to my team is like that was like a weird thing like we wanted to keep our robust and keep our separate especially because like um I know we just viewed our eyes differently and so I feel like being more this goes off of what Arshay was saying earlier about making sure the boathouse is um everyone is being welcoming um I feel like we didn't really feel that way with CRI and so when it happened it was it felt weird but if we were able to change that and to make it really feel like one big team then um that would be that would be a really great thing um and yeah so just like i don't know con just constantly trying to change and trying to uh make your team look more representative of like what our country looks like that that's definitely a good thing yeah yeah i think um you know with with cri we're all already talking about those things and and how did we how do we meet the needs of multiple uh, groups? Some people want to be as competitive as possible. Some people uh, may not be able to uh, make that commitment or want that commitment. So we're exploring all, all kinds of things. I think Eddie's done a great job about kind of moving the needle from uh, that time that you're that you're talking about there, Sam. Well, of course, we can you know we can always do better, and that's kind of what our what our goal is. Um, so I, I think uh, I think that's. Uh, I kind of want to ask one more question, like, um, you know, what's, what did it take to get you people back to the water? Because uh, it would be really awesome to continue these kind of, not only conversations, but engagement with the sport. And, you know, you've all got lives and, you know, Arshay's got the book and the movie and Nancy's uh, starting a company or starting her own uh, brand identity and you're just finishing college. And, you know, how do we, um, how do we really, um, keep people involved um, at multiple levels of the sport. Cause you know, we're talking about the rowers, but uh, from my perspective, 
It's been important to uh, put, uh, put young people in leadership positions of coaching, maybe even uh, referees, maybe in just as basic as um, making sure that um, we draw our vendors at our regattas um, um, from a business community that we re are trying to reach into, whether it be Boston or Philly or wherever. Um, so what, what, what would it take to, um, to engage you currently in the sport of rowing, whether you actually go down and row again or whether you uh, stay involved in a conversation like this with us in the future or, or any of those things, um, you know, what would, what would that take? Well, at least for me, Ellen, I am so ready to get back on the water. <laughs> I, I, mean, I literally, you think I'm kidding, I bought a house next to a row house in Oakland. Unfortunately, it burned down a few months ago, but we're rebuilding it. And I've been trying to figure out where I can get a skull to fit somewhere so I can get on that water because I, I literally bought a place on rowing territory. And so I think for me, it's just the barrier to trying to uh, get a boat or to join a boat club. I see there's like adult programs. Um, in fact, I, I talked to some folks near the regatta and they sent me an email and they said, would you be a coach? And I'm like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> And um, I, I think it was some, it was Eddie <laughs> who told me, you know, you at least know more than they do. So maybe that's an opportunity. And so I'm, I'm, I'm definitely looking into it. I, I'm hoping I can get back on the water. I got myself a little trainer so I can get in shape like the crew, the boys did. Um, and so, uh, I, I hope to uh, figure out how I can get back on the water. I haven't sculled in a long time. I went to sculling camp in Vermont, Vermont years ago. So a little nervous. So I think the other thing would be is if anyone here knows anyone in the Bay Area that would like to help uh, uh, us kind of get back on the water, I'm I'm down to to take it on, do a twosie, <laughs> you know, and, and get back on the water and learn. I think watching the movie completely inspired me. I'm like, what? Y'all can go back on the water after 20 years and just get on there. <laughs> I'm okay catching crabs, <laughs> you know, let's do this. So. That's my, my, my note. Yeah, I want to say, yeah, I, especially after watching it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't take anything. Like, I am so ready to get back into it, especially, like, I had, I've had such a love-hate relationship with, like, my decision to not grow in college, because I know it was, uh, I knew it was something I was able to do, and I could have walked on, but I chose not to, because with me wanting to go to vet school, I very want to focus on, like, all the internship uh, opportunities I've had, and, like, just focusing on school, and I don't think I could have done that in had been a D1 athlete. So uh, yeah, and after that Washington movie, I'm like so ready to get back on the water and I wanna, I, I would jump in a boat right now. I don't care. I would catch all the crabs, whatever. It would be fine. Um, yeah, it's definitely something that I, I could see myself getting back into just like trying to get over that initial hurdle of like, oh, it's been four years. I don't know, man, but watching you guys do it after 20 years, I guess four years is nothing, so. <laughs> Yeah, cool. Um, Arshay, what about you? I know you have a, a, a little daughter that's taken up a lot of your time, but uh, what would it take to get you actually back on the water again? Uh, I, hey, I, we, were, we were planning to row this summer um, yeah. and, and, and this fall, actually, the guy. So we, we're back, you know, COVID happened. And, uh, but we are, I mean, we're back, you know, we're, we're still, you know, still Ergen and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I think, uh, people want to see us more and I want to see you guys more in the water. So I think that's great to have all these alumni for so many years and these different organizations to come back and, 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 and race and master programs so all get together and figure out how, how to race and, 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 and get Ellen in the boat too. So, you know, that oh, you I can show you people what, what is the first, <laughs> what is the first boat look like, you know? And I think, yeah, I think that's important. Um, you know, and I think that, you know, what's more important too now for the guys and us is that we represent you know not only the sport but that word hope right that we all have our careers but we understand how important the sport is to us and how the sport can be important to other folks so i think the biggest commitment for us is that we all we spend our time at least a few times a year helping out the programs recruiting schools or uh, if, if it's getting in the water, if it's speaking at a school, if it's speaking at a boathouse, I think if we all can do that, we, inf we influence a lot more young people to, 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 to um, go down the, the road that we all went to and went through. And so um, I think that's awesome.
Yeah, and I think the one thing that I know is true about the rowing community, like we we love embracing other rowers from other clubs. I see a bit in the chat, somebody from Minneapolis said, come on down and, and the, the same goes anywhere. And, you know, everybody who's on this call, like, you know, would welcome you guys to any boathouse. And, and uh, that's something I always think is like pretty important. And, and uh, the more people uh, see folks like you who not only, you know, represent, um, you know, people of color, but also just like how dynamic and amazing you are and that you don't have to be the Olympic rower just to do this and enjoy it. I think that's a really cool thing uh, because the race means something uh, to you guys in that Chicago sprints. The race means things like how the regatta means something to pull together to that goal. And um, I, I just think that is one of the things that is pretty universal and it, and it can transcend race, but we have to make that happen. We have to make sure that, you know, you folks on the call experience the love and the, and the helpful attitude that you expressed about being a boathouse. So, you know, um, I, I think we kind of wrap it up quickly with that. It's really about help and love. I like Nancy's term over index. I like that. I need to know exactly what that means, but I'll ping you afterward. <laughs> um, because I, I really would love to see you um, out on uh, any regatta venue, uh, kind of spreading this story and, you know, kind of one story at a time, one stroke at a time, because it's pretty powerful stuff. And, and um, we all, we all need the hope that, that you bring with that movie and that Cyan and Nancy bring just by being here tonight. So um, I just want to thank you for having this conversation. Thank everybody. I know we didn't get to too many of the questions in the chat, but um, stay connected through Eddie. If you want to get in touch with any of the uh, panelists, you, you can email Eddie. He's the one that had the, the link for registration. Uh, any final uh, remarks, Eddie, Arche, Cyan, Nancy, any, anything at all? Um, for me, if you'd like to get in touch with me in person, please do add me on LinkedIn. I, I love talking to people. Uh, so I'd definitely be interested if you have any more questions. Um, I'm happy to answer. Cool. Uh, yeah, same. I'm definitely, uh, <laughs> I would love to talk to anyone that has any questions and how I can help further uh, this very important discussion. That'd be great. Um, and yeah, I think Eddie has my email, so I guess you just go to him and it'd be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say that, um, you know, stay encouraged, right? Um, this year hit the, this COVID hit the rowing world pretty hard uh, on the youth level, college level, uh, Olympic level. And uh, we all know because we're rowers in this sport and especially watching the film that crabs happen, right? They unexpected and they come to knock you out of the boat. And this COVID was a bit crab, right? And it, it, it comes to knock us out of the boat, but don't let it knock you out of the boat because you train to fight through it. Or you just lay back and let it pass, right? Let this thing pass and get back up and keep going forward, keep going at it. Um, that, you know, st stay strong. What we're feeling right now and just not being on the water, it, it sucks, right? But it's not gonna last forever. But quitting on, on the sport or just quitting in general lasts a long time. So. I just hope that you guys can stay encouraged and, 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 and um, it's all about the hope you give. And if we can give it to our neighbors or their kids or the next festival or just going to a school or connecting and, and helping an organization like Sierra Boston, it's, it's special. People are gonna remember that for a long, long time. And like we all said, we never forgot our first trip. We never forgot our first time on the water. We've never forgot our first coach. We never forgot our first medal. Someone gave that, someone gave that hope. So I can hope, I hope that all 77, 77 people uh, on this call uh, can give that kind of hope and uh, reach out to Eddie and, and, and Ellen. They'll let you know how real fast, I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah, um, thank you so much, everybody. Arshe, uh, especially thanks so much for just all the work you've been doing. And, um, you know, this movie deserved just a red carpet rollout and, you know, COVID uh, had some other plans, but it was phenomenal. Um, and I think, you know, once it gets released uh, widely, um, all of our, our new communities who we want to have uh, become a part of the Rowan community are going to have that front and center. And you, know, you guys are the trailblazing representation um, that Needed France also was. And, uh, you know, uh, we can't thank you enough for your time, Nancy and Cyan. Uh, it's so great to see Ro Boston and G Ro alumni come back uh, full circle. And you know, just talk about how how important the program was for you, and we can kind of take this and move forward and, and show more kids uh, how the sport.
support of Rowan can be a huge impact to them. So thank you so much Eddie, for what time is practice tomorrow. Cyan wants to know. Uh, <laughs> 11 a.m. We'll, we'll get you in touch. 11 a.m. If you ever yeah. want me at the boathouse, tell me. That's Sleeping too late. In. <laughs> Sleeping in. So, um, but yeah, thank you so much for your time, All everybody. Right. Thanks for everyone tuning in. Yeah, great. Thank yeah, you. we're a little bit after eight o'clock, but uh, big love uh, to everybody on this call. And uh, I really, uh, really look forward to continuing this conversation in, in untold ways moving forward.